episode 53. Welcome to Into the 99, where we have 99 cards because Commander's number one, and I'm one of your hosts, Brian. I'm one of your hosts, Zach. I'm Hope. And I'm Daniel, and today we have some guests with us. Brian's going to introduce them. So today we have uh, two of our partners, uh, Brennan and Dante. Uh, we'll start with Brennan. Brennan, quickly tell everyone what you do and who you are. Plug the screen. Uh, my my name's Brennan. Um, uh, I do a weekly commander stream on Twitch. Uh, my channel is called The Canada Geeks, even though I'm only a single person, but I'm working on that. <laughs> Trying to get more than one person. Uh, Good luck I with have... that. Pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah. We haven't quite figured out the self replicating, but <laughs> just it's it might just be easier to have an additional personality. <laughs> <laughs> I can sometimes if I'm tilted. But uh yeah, so uh we stream or I stream uh every uh every Sunday at eight PM uh Eastern Standard Time on Twitch and I fill the rest of the seats with random guests. I had Zach on last week. Uh I but the videos on YouTube after mm-hmm. and uh, random things on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Brennan. Uh, Brennan's Instagram is also uh, Canada Geeks, and his streams are awesome. He brings on all different people from the community. Definitely would recommend checking those out. Uh, Dante. Good morning, friends. How's it going? Not bad at all. Delightful. Fantastic. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm happy to uh, to up the resident American on this stream by uh, by one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broadcasting from uh, from Oregon, where it's currently on fire. I am actually on fire while we're recording this because that's that's, uh, that's how we roll here in Oregon. Uh, I write a column for Into the Ninety Nine called uh, How to Get Better at Commander Without Really Trying, focusing on the social side of the game, basically just how to not be a jerk and make your commander experience better for everybody by being a better player, including Ooh. yourself. Yeah. Uh, I just wrote an, epi- a, uh, an episode. Yeah, I wrote, oh. an, I wrote an article <laughs> called, uh, called Trigger Happy. It's about uh, remembering your triggers even though uh, even though they might be detrimental to you. Uh, yeah. And that includes all your opponent's triggers and everything like that. It's, uh, it's very antithetical to what we're taught as 60-card uh, format players. But once we're in 100, Everything gets a little bit, uh, a little bit shaky, and yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. Well, even speaking about that last article, yeah, like you said, it does make everyone play better when you remind <laughs> everyone. Yeah, that's true. It's mm-hmm. not like, like you said, like just on, on a quick touch, like if somebody has a trigger that's gonna cause damage to me, Brian, I, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if he forgets, like it's not, it's not a you may, you know, it's not a matter of like, oh, you missed a trigger, I'm just gonna not tell anyone, skip it, and whatever. You know, it, like it holds you more accountable as well, right? Totally, and it makes all of you better magic players. So, I yeah, def absolutely. respect that, there, Dante. Yeah, it's oh, a very I, good article. Make sure you de- make sure you guys go over and check it out. Mm-hmm. Over on the website, into the Um, cool. today we're gonna finish talking about the Zendikar Rising spoilers because we didn't get to any of the multicolored legends. A few other cards have come out since then that are worth talking about, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna start it off with the. Uh, we we didn't have the two shock flip lens for green and black. Uh, Brian, do you have those ones up yet? No, I do not. Okay, I'll uh, I'll read the first one. It's Agadim's Awakening. It's X and three black for a sorcery. Return it. Uh, return from your graveyard to the battlefield. Any number of target creature cards that each have different CMC, X or less, and that's the one that flips for black. It can come in tapped or untapped for three. Yeah, any number that have a different is really cool because especially late game, if you hit like a decently high number and you go like bam, 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 and you could also get like an X cost something or other that's well, like nothing. There's so many creatures that care about like the chain kind of things, like your Prime Speaker Florian, your uh, Prime Nisa. Speaker Florian. Yeah, Florian. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Shout out to my boy. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> Whatever the Prime Speaker is, Van Van oh, Yeah, I can see why I got those confused. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm so used to saying Florian. Um, yeah, Vanifer, where you have the chain, or uh, Yison, the same thing. If you can hit seven, being able to bring back a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven would be crazy late game. Um, oh yeah, I feel like this is going to be kind of a uh, kind of a staple in any Sir Conrad deck going forward. Oh uh, yeah, you know, oh absolutely. You just especially like if you if you're able to go ahead and construct your curve and uh, and just mill everything into your graveyard. I mean. What kind of a Sir Conrad deck doesn't have twenty cards in the graveyard by turn five, right? <laughs> or it should be well, and yeah. great targets to bring back. Also, I, exactly. When, when I saw this, I was more excited for like the eight billion Abzan decks I have built because this just slots into all of them. And oh, Nethroy, this card is 
just so much fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was already it anyways because I play. I still play Crypt of Agadim and a lot of my decks that care about the graveyard. Oh, so to see it, yeah. So to see it printed again in a new way where it's, I guess, more powerful. Like having the it's we don't have the option to get the mana, but to get back, you know, these creatures is just still just as powerful. Well, recursion's great, and also just the ability to have a tap land at its worst, a shock fast land if you need it to keep up, mm-hmm. or a late mm-hmm. game bomb. Like all of these, like I said, are really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a green one up? I sure do. Um, I also wanted to mention about these lands really quickly. I don't know because we weren't sure about it on the last episode. Um, about how they would be considered, like in the deck and in the grave. And... We, we touched on. Them. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, it's uh to, to quickly remind everyone, they are whatever their face side is in every zone except for when you can play them. Yes. So if it's in your hand, you can choose to flip it at any point. But if I'm mm-hmm. searching for, if I'm uh, Nylia's intervention and I'm going to look for lands, and it's on the Agadim's awakening side, I cannot go fetch it out. But I could mystical tutor it out and then play it from my hand with a land. Correct. Yeah. All right. Oh man. Yeah, so, so they're, which they're, is nice. I'm happy they cleared that up. Sorry, what did oh. you say, Brennan? I didn't, we didn't actually. Uh, they're they're very good in decks where you don't have sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, on this side. You're uh, oh you're God. speaking my language there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the green one that we finally got spoiled is Turn Timber Symbiosis. So it's four and three green, and its sorcery is look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. If that card has CMC three or less, it enters with. Three additional one-on counters on it. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in, it, in a random order. It's so it's look at the decent. top seven. Grab any creature card you want. If it's little, add a bunch of. If it's little, make it at least kind of big. Make it if big it's a titan, titan, then it's already big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> titan. So, I squares. mean, yeah. This this seems to slot right into Green's color pie of uh, yeah. you know making it, making it very easy to win games. Yeah, yeah. it's big, yeah. and if it's not big, make it big. Yeah. Green is very simple. <laughs> yeah. I love green. Yeah. Green's my favorite color. Simple man with a I mean, simple plan. I mean, yeah, like your green. Green's my favorite color too. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to struggle to find a, a green deck where you would not want to play this. Oh, yeah. like of I, would, and yeah. I simply cannot think of one. Well, because <laughs> at, at its core, at the end of the day, it's still a solid land if you need an early game slash a land if you just want it. And late game, mm-hmm. it's, it's. Big creature. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I'll probably, I'll, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't play it for the seven. I'd probably just play it for the land. Yeah. Um, but you might. I have a bunch of decks that that can. seven would work real good in. It's and especially th- your Solvala deck, Brian, where you're generating your seven mana. I was going to say, it's not like you're yeah, struggling so. for mana. Get deep for that in Elish Norn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Turn three so Elish Norn. No one's going to let that down. <laughs> yeah. I, you oh, know man, what? that would be disgusting. At, so, at some disgusting. point, they're... At some point, they're going to make a green commander that lets you have 200 cards in your deck and play three lands per turn. It'll happen. <laughs> white, That's you just may, the way that it, white, you it may, goes. <laughs> your max starting deck is 80. Yeah. I was just wanted to say, speaking of Elish Norn, you want to know what was said to me the other day? Hmm. Should I make an Elish Norn commander deck? And I was like, no. Who hurt you? Go <laughs> home. Think about what's going on in your life. Yeah, you're actually banned from the store for a week. You have to self-reflect. <laughs> mm-hmm. so you're already back. bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, yeah. If you're going to go mono white, it's Arch- Archangel Avacyn. Oh, like, let's be real here. Thank you. That, that, that's at least a little bit less, you know, makes you want to kill you. It's true. Um, the next one I really wanted to touch on is, as I've said, I love Landfall. It's uh, this Ancient Green Warden. It's four green green for a five seven, which is good stats already. Reach. Uh, you can play lands from your graveyard, so Crucible of Worlds, real good. And then it mm-hmm. just doubles your land triggers, because why not? Green needed that at six. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, this is the card that I've um, affectionately dubbed Land Harmonicon. Yeah, this whole mm-hmm. set like just seems like, hey, do you want to upgrade Wing Brace? So badly. Yeah. Like I played upgrade Tatiova. Yeah, yeah. I've only I've played like against a few landfall decks, but just now, even thinking about it, I'm like these decks are gonna be disgusting. Now. This is Field of the Dead trigger number six now. Oh, uh, I also yeah. ew. I also um, <laughs> I'm kind of casually working on like a landfall Omnoth deck. Okay. So now, 
Well, now I was, I was, yeah, well, I was gonna keep working on it. Was and I was like, well, I'll just wait till Zendikar's out and then I'll see. Like, I'm like, yeah. that seems foolish. I keep going to upgrade my Moldrotha and it's the same thing. Like, there's yeah. just so many just good on. cards coming out for it. I know. I've been really struggling with that. I'm just like, guys, I've got a bunch of decks that I want to work on right now, but I'm just like, I really just need to sit tight and chill out for a second. Sit there's a. Yeah. From this set, there's currently only one like legendary creature I want to build a deck around. Yeah, that's. I was actually saying that that there's not a lot of. To me, it doesn't seem overwhelming for commander options of things that you'd want to build super badly, but there's so mm-hmm. many upgrades for every deck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think there's one or two that I would be interested in building, but yeah, it's mostly like this deck is just like upgrade city. New Omnoth is really oh. cool. I really like. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we go on and stuff, uh, Dante, I was going to ask, do you have a favorite card from this set so far? Spoiled? Do I have a favorite card from this set? I mean, we haven't talked about it yet, and uh, I'll, I'll let we're, you take we're gonna it when get you're there. ready. Yeah. Um, Brennan, oh, do you okay. have one? Uh, yeah, you guys actually touched on it last time. Which one? Uh, I, I had beef with Brian over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, the new legendary Minotaur landfall extra combat guy. Hell yeah. yeah! Oh god, yeah, I love that guy so much. That's a he, he was card. my favorite until my favorite card got spoiled. Yeah. The what, landfall you're... extra combats. Well, you're the Minotaur guy. That's true. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> I, I think it's really good. You can you can get it with um, Death Battle War Cry. Uh, the they have the Eternal Lakes uh, extra combats. Like, oh, yeah. Like, damage done. Nojila. Aggravated Assault or Relent- Relentless Assault. Which one's the enchantment? Yeah. Aggravated Assault. Uh, aggravated Assault. Where you, yeah, so you have the enchantment, dump your mana in with. This card's sneaky good in Minotaur Tribal decks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's sneaking good in red. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I, yeah. It's one yeah, of those things, I, if I open it, I'm putting it in Zerzoth. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If if I open it, this is going straight into Grand Warlord Rada. Um, yeah. I'm always looking for new uh, targets for Fierce Empath, and this guy slots right in. Right? I've already got Aggravated Assault for uh, for the extra combats and uh, Hellkite Tyrant, and yeah. this guy, like, you know what? Let's just have extra combat step number three. Same vibe. <laughs> if I get this one, it's going right into Perforos Bronze Blood because it's the same thing. It's just like aggro, aggro, aggro. Q, Q, Q. I did want to touch on one more rare before we get back into these. Yes, of course. Uh, sure. Scoot Swarm. Someone in our... That's what I was just someone yeah. in the Discord. Oh, God. They're like, this actually, it seems like it could be okay on its face. No, this is an insane card. Uh, it's the... <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, three, three mana landfall. <laughs> Whenever a land enters under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect token. Already a great ability, already rare level. Super good. If you control six yep. or more lands, create a copy that's a copy of... Uh, a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm. If it just copied oh, the tokens, I'd be like, wow, but it doesn't. It copies the card. Yeah, exactly. It, it functions as its own miniature doubling season. <laughs> and I'm going to then copy it with Lithoform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, and because of that, you know, it, it, it doubles exponentially. Yeah. So it gets mm-hmm. out of hand very rapidly. Well, let's, uh, let's not be so crazy. Math. If I have 10 lands out and I have Scoot Swarm out and I escape shift, it's too much math oh, for my yeah. brain. <laughs> that is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> So what I love about Zendikar Rising, and we talked about it last week, but I just want to bring it up again. We are seeing so many cards that we've seen in previous Zendikar sets or previous sets that Wizards has come back around to like, hey, remember this card? Well, here it is again, but better. Like, you know, uh, Scoot, Scoot Swarm was Scoot Mob, Scoot which Mob. was still already... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was already a good card anyway, but like it just got better. Obviously, Omnath, same thing. Then, you know, Vampire Nighthawk. I'm not being thing. better, I would say, as objective. Um, yeah, sure. No, he, he is better in, in ways. He's better than Omnoth 3. Yeah, he's better than Omnoth 3, but not Omnoth 1 and 2. Omnoth 1 is crazy. Omnoth 1 is oh, disgusting. Yeah. Omnoth 2 is so aggro. Omnoth 3 is... I, I have the, uh, Omnoth 3 is clearly the Tokyo Drift of the series. Like, let's be real here. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo! I'm just looking That's through... Right. The... Oh, go ahead. Of all the Omnath... Uh, I actually like the Teamer Omnath the best. Me too. It like it doesn't feel like um, we're just we just care about lands, which is what Omnath typically does. It felt it feels like you can do a little bit more because you have that elemental like tribal that you want to mm-hmm. build now, which is yeah. nice. I'm not just land when land. I, uh, Solidarity, sister. Probably. Yeah, yeah, of- you, you have a couple different directions you can go with him. 
Exactly. Out of every collector sets alternate art kind of things, I don't think I've been more excited for any of them than oh. these ones. These are all wicked alternate frames. Even that oh, one Brennan just goodness. talked about, the Morog, that alternate art is bonkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. It's very good. Uh, yeah. Oh, because it's yeah, lamp. I know that you guys. Yeah, yeah. I know that you guys touched on it last week, but like, I need like seventeen copies of that new Lotus Cobra. It oh. looks uh, incredible. That Lotus Cobra and foil is gonna just change my life. I'm sorry. Oh, I absolutely. still think I, I like the the Judge Promo still. Oh, I still think that one. Judge good. Promo's good, but this one's real good. This in foil is just gonna look nuts. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Hey, I'm not sure that I'm. Yeah. Even all the all the black ones look amazing too. Like I think my favorite is honestly Skyclave Shade because it has that nice like violet in the background of the moon and it just yeah. God these foilings are gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. Fair yeah, enough. The, I think I think the alternate art that I'm looking forward to the most is the uh, the landfall cat enchantment. I forget what it's called, but oh yeah, that, the, that alternate art is gonna be absolutely incredible. I'm sorry, oh, landfall no. cat. Oh, did you not see that one, Hope? No. Oh, there's uh, okay. it you is piqued my interest. <laughs> Felidar Retreat, three and a white. Uh, whenever a land enters under your control, choose one. Create a two-two cat beast creature token, oh. or put a one-one counter on each creature you control. They gain vigilance till the end of the turn. I see it in your face, Hope. Hope's <laughs> oh, also yeah. excited for this. I'm so for her here. Cat deck. So, yeah. My cat deck and the Traxa. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hope Traxa's one-one yeah. counters. Hope just yep, like I have, drag I have uh, Rin and Siri as well. Like this is going right in there. I've I've been just like dying to make a Rin and Siri deck, and I'm just so ready for it now. What's that card? I have not seen it yet. Or yeah. I do not have. No, I understand what card <laughs> it is. I just have not had one. <laughs> and you oh, never yeah. will. Yeah, we have one at work. Or do you? Yeah, yeah, we, I I, yeah we sold it. Anyways, Thanks unrelated. For of me, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're um, saying even club. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna get into <laughs> some of these late legendaries here. Yeah. Um. Okay. Dante, I'll let you start off because I don't want to. I don't want to take away the one that you wanted the most. Your thunder. Sure. Oh my goodness! This one's coming from the Zendikar Rising Commander decks. Uh, it's Anawan oh, yes. the Ruin Thief. Uh, so yeah, Anawan right. the Ruin Thief. He is uh, blue, black, and two for a legendary creeper, creature, Vampire Rogue. Um, See, other rogues you control get plus one, plus one, and whenever one or more rogues you control deal combat damage to a player, that player mills a card for each one damage dealt to them. And if that player mills at least one creature card, this way you draw a card. It's great. Like, yeah, and a, and a partridge in a pear tree. Or, yeah, am I right? Like, it has so much built into it. Like it's got a draw engine, it's got an anthem, it mills people, so it annoys me. Like it's it's all there. <laughs> well, and in yeah. its and in its colors and demure colors, like get out of town. It's so easy to make things unblockable. Also, to make your rogues hit yep. rogue so tribal, much of the prowl, viable. Yeah. They were supposed to be just like a really basic deck that was just supposed to replace the product. And these deck lists look sick. awesome. Like they're they're supposed yeah. to be intro level. And they're like, here's a $15 Moose Money Una. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. disgusting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's a yeah, $13 Moose Money uh, Sig River Cutthroat, right? Like, oh, yeah. like that, that makes up for the <laughs> so cost nasty. of the deck just in those two cards. I know. Yeah, our Dude, like, they, our cost for is $50 for both decks. Like, yeah. That's nuts. That's, There's no reason to not buy that it. That is free. With everyone calling it Moose Money, I think we should make a petition now. Uh. Oh, I know. <laughs> Somebody get in touch with, like, the... Who prints money here? It's the USD yeah. to MSD huh? now. The Canadian the Mint. The Mint, yes. To Somebody monopoly argue. money. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm would... curious if uh, Anawan is going to be built a lot like uh, Yuriko Tiger's Shadow because it kind of that's the kind of feel I got from it was you know like the where you're not ninja yeah. yeah where you're not ninjutsuing you're still like because it's rogues you're going to want to use Prowl you know mm-hmm. and Prowl is a very very cool mechanic and it kind of functions the same way where you're attacking and then after your creatures have been you know after rogues dealt damage you get to pay these Prowl calls and a lot of these cards they're very very good for their what they do with their prowl calls so that's oh, a yeah. Cool. yeah that's the thing i saw with this absolutely cool. i yeah i forget i forget the name of the uh of the new sphinx but they have a new sphinx rogue that's coming exclusively yeah i saw in the that one deck. that was a really cool one enigma oh, thief. oh it's called yeah. enigma thief. it's called enigma thief it's uh five yeah. and two blue sphinx rogue five five prowl for three and one and prowl for anybody that doesn't know you can cast it for his prowl cross if you had uh if you dealt combat damage to a player with a sphinx or a rogue in this which is interesting um and then it's got flying and whenever it enters the battlefield for each opponent return up to one target non-land permanent that player controls to its owner's hand yeah. so it's like a mini sacred it's uh <laughs> yeah they're so you're going to be able to build this deck pretty strong if you want. Like, I was talking initially about putting Bitter Blossom, stuff like that in it. Like yeah, they all make rogues. Yeah, you're going to get a lot Una making rogues as well. But 
This is also just going to be a fun deck. This looks out of the box like a sleeve it up, play a deck. Like, it's very focused. It does one thing. Yeah. And you that one thing is rogues. I'm so yeah. regretful that, like, because we started a commander league at our LGS, and I'm so regretful mm-hmm. that I didn't just wait. Yeah. Because one of these would have been awesome mm-hmm. to play oh, in absolutely. that league. Oh, absolutely. Out of the box oh, yeah. or nasty. Um, do yeah, you out have, of the box, it looks pretty good. Do you have that second one up there? The I do. Oh, yeah. If you can read what the other commander deck uh, is. So the other was. commander deck is uh, the the commander is Obun, Moldaya Ancestor. It's one red, green, white. Naya. For, yeah, Naya. For a legendary elf spirit. 3-3 uh, three, three at the beginning of combat on your turn. Up to one target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste. Which is dope because usually it's just haste. Mm-hmm. Um, X is Obun's power, and it's still a land. And landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. So, I think, obviously, that seems that the point is buff Obun. Yeah, make yeah. your commander be Smash, you know. Oh, I have this land. Here. What a vibe. And then the other, one of the other, um, I'm super stoked about this, um, exclusives for this deck, because there's only three new, quote unquote, new cards in each of the commander yep. decks, notwithstanding cards from Zendikar Rising. Um, but so the one of the ones for this one is Trove Warden. It's two and two white for a cat beast, so you know I love it. For a three, <laughs> <laughs> three, four with vigilance, landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under control, exile target permanent card with CMC for your left from your graveyard, and when it dies, each permanent exiled with it. Put each permanent exile with it onto the battlefield under the control of that card's owner. Which uh, is interesting. It's a cool card for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, I oh, like yeah. the exclusive ones there. Me too. The, yeah. I think, in my opinion, I think the best exclusive is in the Rogue deck, the Whisper Steel, Whisper Steel Dagger. When I saw that, I was like, I was on the fence about buying the decks in general, not because I don't think they're good, but I was just kind of hoping for a couple more cards since we were only getting you know two commander decks i was thinking the land base might be just a little bit better but whisper still dagger is probably my favorite of the the new cards from the commander decks um it, it's two in a black for an uh equipment equipped creature gets plus two plus O. Oh. whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player you may cast a creature card from that player's graveyard this turn and you may spend mana as though it was any color to cast that spell and oh, it's interesting for- Oh yeah, it's super interesting. Yeah, so with the like we were talking about, like obviously with Anawan, we're going to be making people mill when we do a combat damage, and if something hits with Whispers still, you can just reanimate a creature from their graveyard. The big thing being able to spin your mana as though it was any color. They've been Wizards have been doing that a lot lately, where they're giving putting that text. You know, it was much harder to do that kind of stuff previously, but now it's. (laughs) <laughs> I have to say, I think I prefer the you may pay mana as though it was any color rather than like the free cast. Yep. Yeah. Because you still it's have still to earn it, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You still have to earn it. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, I'd rather not, you know, have someone, you know, come come at me with a slither blade and then just automatically get like a sepulchral primordial or something like that just yeah. out of my graveyard for free for, you know, what, uh, for what, three mana to come down, three mana to equip, so yeah, yeah. six mana to get something humongous out of my graveyard, I mean, that yeah. that, yeah, that like feels real bad. Turn, like a turn four swing, you don't have any blockers, but we've milled you already. Oh, look, it's like the best creature mm-hmm. in your deck. I'm going to cast that for free. Um, I was also yeah. going to note, um, I know, Zach, you said that you thought that the land bases might be better or you wanted them to be better, but I think that mm-hmm. at the price, they're supposed to be an intro product. They're supposed to replace Planeswalker decks, so I don't think that it should necessarily be that much better. Like, for the price that they're giving them to us, I mm-hmm. think that the cards that they're putting in it, I think that that's the, well, the well, value, right? 25 Canadian dollars is what, like, eight beans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I think I'm, that's... I, think... I, I guess I guess my thing was, too, is, like, and I'm, I'm not downgrading the deck, because, yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I was just, oh, I was kind of like, if this is the year the commander, like, would it have really killed you guys to give us a shock? Like, you gave us shocks in the brawl decks. You couldn't give us just a watery grave and a, I don't know, stomping ground. And they're rotating out of standard anyways. I'm going to you know, be honest, you, they can reprint the dual lands in brawl. I'm still not playing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, did I buy all the brawl decks just for the free shock lands? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> did you buy the brawl <laughs> like, decks just to make them into commander decks? Yes. Yep. Yes, we did. <laughs> that's that's what, what was that, Brennan? You got lost in the in the mix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm not a huge fan of the Naya deck. I don't think it's like 
worse. It's it's the weaker one for sure. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, it's but, yeah. but even uh like the the rogue deck like seems like super fun. It's like probably a little narrow, but like they reprinted Demir Key Rune and Demir Locket. Like why can't you just slot the talismans back in? Yeah, the yeah, talismans would have been a great addition. Yeah, that that's what Feel I was that. yeah, that's what I was gonna uh, jump on as well. It's like you know, I mean, in, in addition to the land base being, like, a little bit upgraded, like, sure, like, I'm going to see Dismal Backwater in there, like, whatever, this is what I expect from WotC at this point, but, like, why not Demir Signet? Like, like why not Demir Signet? Why not Talisman of, you know, Demir, whatever the heck it's called? Um, you know, Talisman of Demir. Demir Signet is in the rogue deck. Is it? Oh, wait, is it? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I thought it was just the key room unlock it. Notable oh, reprints. It's apparently three dollars US. So oh wow, so six okay. dollars. Well, I stand corrected. Yeah, there's. Now, a... say, now I look like an idiot on the internet. Yeah. Oh, well, there's. Yeah. Hey. Probably, probably isn't the first time, Dante. Don't worry about I, it. it. In, this mean, is not the first time. time. <laughs> in fairness, there's no way to keep track of what they're spoiling. Like, I'm sure by the end of this episode, they'll be like new secret layer, landfall <laughs> edition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. It was just kind of like. But you I, are I complaining. Do. No, I am. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm I, just kidding. I uh, <laughs> like if it's supposed to be an intro product too. Shocklands are rotating out. Why can't you give us just one each for new players to get used to it? And that's all I'm saying. Because they're like, rotating well, out and go buy them at your LGS. I guess I don't know. At, at the same time, uh, as an intro product, it is introducing new players to how badly we need reprints of that's true. weird talisman and stuff. Yep. So you just get them uh, yeah. right into Wizards printing uh, yeah. cards. Yeah, don't get too movies. excited. I, um, I do think, honestly, uh, yeah. though, that based on like what an average deck looks like, the Rogue deck looks like it can sit down at a, a normal table. Right fine. out of the box, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing that I like about this as an intro product is that with it, like I said, replacing like Planeswalker decks and stuff like that, like that'll hit all the colors. It still hits all the colors. Do they have Soul Ring? These yeah. ones? In these decks, I yeah. think each one has Soul Ring and uh, Arcane Signet. That's bonkers. Six bucks. That's, that's crazy. Set. That's fourteen dollars. So yeah, I think really... like Daniel Daniel was mentioning with these decks uh, yesterday when we were at our LGS that the the commander decks that came out in Ikoria weren't really focused, and where these ones coming out, they're they're more focused on the on the task. It's not like oh well, well because they have one general yeah. you know they have one objective and this is it and it can be very streamlined and very on theme where it's not trying to mm-hmm. hit three themes the in Acor- one deck well the Acoria decks they brought so many cool things to the table but we were talking mm-hmm. like the Kethril deck for example Tam is amazing Tam sucks oh, yeah. in that deck there's like nothing generated around him like you mm-hmm. if you play the precon with Tam it's not mm-hmm. worth it you're there's pretty much nothing you can trigger in it it Mm-hmm. It's not good. I I just built Tam and I was like, oh, I'll take I I only took Tam out of the deck. I've <laughs> made a new deck, yeah. <laughs> right? I, and I it's, think it's, as far as commander decks go, at least from like what I was because I, I was recently looking at like all the precons, yep. and I think the 2018 Planeswalker ones have the best like secondaries that fit in the theme. Yeah, but other oh, than absolutely. that, well, like, even Kalamax, Kalamax and Halden and Paco are extremely different decks. Yeah, like they, you, no one would build the them the deck. same. No. It's just not even like it's just not even yeah. the same deck. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, and um, yeah, and what and what's his face? Uh, Otrimi, Otrimi, the ever playful. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't care how many other legendaries you throw in there. Like, I'm not running a mutate deck with anybody except for Otrimi at the well, helm. Well, know? exactly. Like, why right. why, why would you? Like, and when you look at Kaz or Nukima, they have nothing to do with mutate like at all. Like they're yeah they're, yeah they're food chain commanders. Yes. Yeah, like yep. um. The only one that's kind of interchangeable Whale shark. is uh the only interchangeable one really is like maybe Jarena and then the Trin and Silvar because like at least both care yeah humans about like oh, yeah. human things and in attacking. one form or another. Well, there's not I mean, much more that Marty wants to do other than just. But hit. still, like my like my Jarena deck and my Trin and Silvar deck are totally different. super different decks too. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah I, didn't, I didn't like that these two commander decks were much more focused. It it makes like for it being an intro product, it makes it much easier to as a new player to help um, like upgrade these decks and continue. Like you already have this path that's pretty like set for you. So you can yep. continue mm-hmm. to make it better. And we did get better reprints, I think because of it, because they weren't just shoving everything they could in that seemed like it was just value. You know, we were getting Ona and Sig and all that stuff. So it yeah. is, it is cool. Um, I'm just always, well, and they could just another thing to it is it, it's really easy with those other commander decks. Picking it up as a new player, it would be really confusing of where do I go with this? What do I make? 
These mm-hmm. are very upgradable on your own. Like you can, like you mm-hmm. said, the decks do one thing. This Naya thing cares about landfall and making the the commander big. That's it's yeah. what works with those cards, right? The same with rogues. Yeah, it cares yeah. about rogues. It cares about maybe some mill stuff. Yeah, like you would go yeah. to like the internet and just go on to like the gather and be like mill or rogue. Oh, yeah, or rogue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you can go in so many different ways with it. Yeah, and like all um, these cards will yeah. come up that that are synergistic, you know. It's really well, it makes it a lot easier, I think. Ninety nine lands with my commander. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, no, I'm actually going to pick up the uh, the rogue one yeah. because mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of uh, like black goblins from uh, Warwind block mm-hmm. that uh, you can, like make rogues or do stuff when yeah. when rogues uh, deal combat damage. So mm-hmm. I think that'd be like a cool something. You can a- make a lot more. Black Goblin Rogue tokens. That's which... that's a little that's a free tip from your friends at Into the Nine Nine. Go through the lore one block. That's where you're gonna yeah. find stuff that you need for this. What, <laughs> I, find what I do like about what I do like about the commander decks as they have them printed for this set is that it really does reward you for just cracking packs. They did a very good job. Like the yeah, Ikoria commander decks, like you guys said, they're kind of all over the place. Whereas like if I just went out and bought a pack of Ikoria, depending on what commander deck I got for that you know, that year or that Mm -hmm. set, it doesn't necessarily mean my pack that I'm opening is going to have anything to do with the commander deck. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. There are a lot of rogues. Yeah, like I bought, I think there's a lot of rogues and there's a lot of landfall. (laughs) Like I bought two boxes of Ikoria and I was going through trying to upgrade my Otrimi deck and like Mm -hmm. the commons and uncommons that like the list was calling for. I didn't even have them in my two boxes. I was like, yeah. what is yeah, this? Comments? Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. I was just like, so that's, hmm. <laughs> this is a trend I hope we see more is that like yeah. we we get rewarded for like just wanting to crack packs because there are just some people that like cracking packs. You know, yeah. I have a bunch of friends. Well, yeah. And, and <laughs> especially because you'll be able, <laughs> especially because you'll be able to crack set boosters, right? So mm-hmm. if, if you want, like not, that that is to say that if you get a set booster that it, it's like, synergy and its theming isn't doesn't really hit what you're trying to hit you're kind of hooped yeah but it's nice to know that like if you're gonna buy a box of set boosters as opposed to a box of draft boosters it puts you in a little bit of a better position in that That's regard kind of getting out. i feel like you're more likely this yeah. time around to crack a pack and have something that, that that that'll have value yeah. not necessarily financial value but value and playability well and yeah then you're it is making everything more accessible um, I was going to say, with regards to these commander decks, um, I also hope that we see this kind of like steering for how they how they build them. Not maybe not necessarily for all the decks. I would still like to see um, decks with different um, uh, face options. But it's nice to see that this sort of streamlined direction is an option. Um, even if they did it, but didn't have like all reprints, I, that would be cool too. If they did like a new deck. With some reprints, mm-hmm. but it was just one commander, so it kind of makes me excited for what they decide to do with the Commander Legends ones. Mm-hmm. I, I was also, oh yeah, I was definitely wrong about one of the commanders. Mm-hmm. I hate Hazri, like I said, but I have seen so many people just excited about building it, and they're like, "Oh, I love this party mechanic. It's like really cool. It's Tazri party deck." Mm-hmm. And I was wrong. So party time. Way more people like Tazri than I thought. Yeah, well, and it's just it, oh, yeah. especially because. Uh, I, let's be honest. Like, there's a lot of crossover between people that play Magic and people that play D and D. Yeah. Right. So there's. Yeah, there is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that that mechanic really resonates with people that like that sort of vibe, right? So. Oh yeah. They, they really course, should have opened like, up that party option, though. Yeah. You're only leaving it to four four classes. Well, well they're gonna. I think they're gonna oh, expand it in, in the D and D set. Yeah. yeah. Give me oh, yeah. multi-classing. If they give me a mechanic of multi-classing, <laughs> I can lose my mind. Multi-class, oh, multi-class yeah. like, commander. In standard. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> that, I think the one thing that I'm kind of excited or that, that like I'm kind of happy for is that there's no pre-released bands as of yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, pre-released bands, I think it's only ever happened for Lutri. Mm-hmm. Wasn't there two cards from the last set that got banned right before? No, I think it was just, just Lutri. 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 It was just Lutri, yeah. Just As, so, uh, it was Lutri and then the whole companion mechanic, which they had to overhaul. Lightning Otter. They were oh. just like, wait a second, this was a mistake. This is good. <laughs> so, uh, before we go on, I have to touch on just the nightmare that is the Lithiform engine. Oh, this was absolutely oh, hilarious. Man. Yeah, their, uh, their head judge 
has changed it so that it's not creating a token. So you're not creating a token, so it won't interact with doubling season or parallel lives or anything else. Yeah, any anything you create as the token permanent, it's like, oh, it's a token spell on the stack. What? Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. So, honestly, like, they put that tweet up, and there's, like, everyone was like, are you sure? Like, this seems like you don't understand the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that, and I put it in our, host, or I put yeah. it in our general discussions, so I was like, uh... Guys, mm-hmm. well, I, I think, like I was telling, I was talking to the owner of our LGS. I was like, "There's no way this got through playtesting," and no one was like, "I'm just gonna make doubling season," and then another doubling season. Yeah, there's no way. Mm-hmm. No, anyone who saw this card, they're like, "Well, that needs to make <laughs> yeah. another doubling season." <laughs> but like, yeah, because that's, yeah, yeah. I, I personally, the, the rule seems so weird. Like, it interacts like a token. If it goes to the grave, it'll be exiled. If it, it looks like mm-hmm. a token, it, it sounds it like a token. A token. token. It says token uh, on yeah. the card. Uh, you can target it with token things like Brutoclad can target the token. A it token makes. has always mm-hmm. been a token. Yeah, except yeah. for in this uh, situation. Like, but not now. Just kidding. It this sounds ain't like it. a duck. Quacks like a duck. Yeah, it's a bird. Uh, if it's, yeah. it it's sounds like a duck. Quacks like a duck. It's not getting doubled. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, this is this is certainly really weird. Like, and I don't understand why Watsi insists on saying like, "Oh, we only test for standard and draft." Like, you clearly just need a commander player in there. Yeah. Well, because like also, any commander player would have looked at that and been like, "Hey, look at that doubling season, anointed procession, anything." What well, yeah. like, you oh, can't okay. tell me that you don't think about commander because this all that's all this year has been. Mm-hmm. We like, actually we absolutely <laughs> we only test for standard. We don't think about commander players. Nobody plays Here's standard. Here's the box toppers that are not standard legal that all the commander players want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have an alt art Valakut you monsters. Sure. Mm-hmm. The, the right. card itself was boils on MTG Goldfish, mm-hmm. and like when Seth was doing the uh, like just talking about the card, he immediately brought up. Anointed procession. Yes. Yeah, he's just like, hey, this would be a great card to do. So double. did we. Like, when we were talking just, yeah. like, among ourselves, like, it was like, obviously that's the choice. Obviously. So, like, how did no one understand this? Oh, they did. Yeah, it's, uh... this is, from what they were saying in the tweet, this is the first time they've printed a card that's like this, that works and then functions this way, and because of that, they had to basically come out and explain, like, this is how it is meant to function, even though it reads this way. It so doesn't stupid. work this way. Yeah, basically, they're like, hey, we... If you have any level of reading comprehension, don't. Mm-hmm. We were, like, <laughs> there, there was a few judges at the store, too, yesterday, and we were, yeah. like, all just talking about ourselves. And they're like, like what do you mean? They're like, they're like, no, it worked that way. I'm like, according, according to this guy, wrong. doesn't. According to your boss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, in brackets, after it says uh, copy target permanent spell you control, it says that copy becomes a becomes token. A token. Yeah. Yep. But they're so like, it, like, it becomes, but it's not that. created. But like our LGS store is like, it has to be created he's just to like, become. but it is a token. He's like, because I'm not putting a second doubling season down. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say, I don't have a first doubling season to put down. <laughs> sure, as, <laughs> sure as heck, don't have a second. <laughs> it seems like such a strange card to have printed. Like every interaction that you can think of with it is just made possible. Fertile. It's like rings of bright hearth. It's it copies mm-hmm. spells. It makes Brian yeah, it, another Ristic Study followed by another Smothering Cut. Do hey, do you play? The four? Yeah, do you play the four <laughs> for the draw four for the cast? I'd rather die. Yeah. So it's yeah. uh, it's too good, but apparently you can't double tokens. But that'll well, break it. But then there's <laughs> also the um, what Mirror Maid and the other ones that are what they're two drops and count or copy target enchantment. Oh, yeah. I'll pay four and double that. Get another one of those. I will and... have. This come in as a Rhystic study, and this second one come in as a Rhystic study? Oh, like, man. Are you going to pay the three for a- that one? Adrian yeah, was saying to get around it just to make a doubling season token and then put Brutal Cloud in the deck, and then I'll turn all of my... <laughs> make bru- all of your... Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm going to make yeah, 75 I, doubling seasons. You can populate them, right? Yeah. yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't wait to, like, see Could you not? Yeah, this you thing. can populate them, right? I think you can only populate creatures. I don't know. You, you, I think you I can only populate token. tokens, but... I'm not a judge. So if this is a yeah. token, I should be able to... Find yeah, populate it. is you can choose any creature token you control. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. But you can still second harvest it. What second harvest? Put a, right, so put a copy of every roll. token you have. Turn it into a creature, then don't. Yeah, the enchantment that turns all enchantments into creatures. Star, what is that, Starfield and Nyx? No. Uh, Opalescence? Yeah, Opalescence. Opalescence. Oh, and Starfield um, and Nyx, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. the, I think the simple answer here is you just 
Rude are clad because yeah. putting a second Starfield. We're making it a team or deck, boys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there's yeah, like there's. It's a we good will card. find a way around it. It's a it. good don't card, no matter how they. Yeah, no matter how they try to be like, guys, don't break this card. Like mm-hmm. we fit to do it. And the evil geniuses yeah. are out there, like, mm, how am I going to do oh, yeah. this? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think the thing that gets me about this card, like, just from a like a design perspective, is wasn't it like six months ago where. Watsy said, "Like, yeah, we're we're gonna stray away from making really powerful, colorless artifacts because of exactly like this reason. It goes in literally every single deck. That's, that's what Sight I said. Out. I can't I can't think <laughs> yeah. of a single deck that doesn't benefit from this card in one form or another. Every deck is better. With hey, it. yeah, I'll pay four mana and make a second mana reflection. You, Why not? If you have permanence in your deck, it's better for it. If you don't uh, have yeah. permanence in your deck and it's all spells, it's better congratulations, for it. it also works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm going to set the over-under at like seven months before this thing gets the ban hammer. They like, also, they didn't print the accept mana abilities thing, which is, uh, which is they've caught that on every other card, but they're like, copy whatever you want, guys. Yeah, just, activate let's see the trigger, we don't man. care. So I'm just thinking, Priest like, of Titania. putting these in mm-hmm. like colorless decks, like, oh, I'm going to copy my Kozilek. <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. Planeswalker alts are triggered or activated abilities, so oh yeah, why don't I just make yep. that second Will Kenrith Emble? Why don't I? Emble? Emble. <laughs> I'm having a brain emble. <laughs> okay, we need emblem yeah. removal, guys. <laughs> we need, like, Ooh, I'll yeah, we so absolutely emblems. need emblem removal. Fun. Yeah, that would be great. Why not, right? So, me, a bad person, <laughs> immediately goes to a mix list. <laughs> um, no. There was. A Do we few... want to get to any? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to overtalk you. Oh no, no worries. I uh, I was gonna Wait. say there's just a few other legendaries I did want to touch on. Yeah. Um, while okay. we are while we're off squirreling, I promised Zach that he could start with this uh, the the cleric because he likes it. To say the I'm least. I'm super excited about this card. <laughs> so um, this is the buy box promo. Uh, if you guys listened to our, our last episode, then uh, we talked about how they went back to doing what wizards used to do, where the buy box promo is a card that can be obtained in the set. It just has special art that you can only get from the buy box. So the buy box promo is Aura Sky Cleave Hero Fant. It's two white and a black. Uh, it's a core cleric. It's a 3 3. They have lifelink, and whenever Aura or, or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with lesser CMC from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card, I started playing in Scourge Onslaught and Legion. Yep. And the mm-hmm. cleric tribal that you were able to build out of that was insane. And now I'm just like, oh, I'm going to build a cleric deck now. Battlefield Medic, where are you? Mm-hmm. I say Edgewalker, where are you? Oh, you know. Edgewalker, thirty dollars already. <laughs> uh, I uh, yep. this is a really really cool one. I love both artworks. They both look really great. Yeah, um, it's just I, I, I'm excited. I'm gonna have to build a cleric deck now. I really enjoyed it. Just like oh, I'm gaining all of this life because what the Soul Sisters are clerics as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited because I can finally use Edgewalker. It's so good. What do you mean finally to... use? There's you. Can, you could have no already made. No one's stopping you, deck. Zach. Yeah. Clear yeah. Time. Who oh, has care. you? Under duress, my brother and I would would care to disagree. What? Because there's That's that fun. oh, there's that black cleric that you can. I think it's like you tap it or pay a, a CMC and sacrifice. I think three clerics to go and find like this big six six demon. Oh, you mean Shadowborn Apostle? Oh, yes, Shadowborn Apostle. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Four dollars each copy. You can have as many of them as you uh, want in a deck. That's yep. ridiculous. Yeah, and then just go is, ahead and bring um, them all back because why not? Yeah. Bring them all back I, and cast them for free with Edgewalker. And then what's the what's the enchantment? Is Liliana's whatever? Liliana's uh, contract? contract. Yeah, you have four demons. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey demons, yeah. it's your boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, um, when I saw this card spoiled, it plays very much like how I like playing Magic, where I'm doing graveyard shenanigans, and it's an aristocrat style build. And it just has lifelink on it, so it's like all the stuff I like. It's doing so graveyard. I, I know, it's doing Orzov. You said what? I said it's doing graveyard. It's doing Orzov. It's splash some light. green in there, and Zach's buying every copy. <laughs> I'm just like thinking yeah, to myself, I'm like rest in peace. Some, yeah. If that's what I had green for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Mess with everyone. Oh uh, man, I've lost my mind. But like, 
I didn't really like I've not really looked up the cleric tribe before, so I started looking and there are so many good clerics that I just didn't know existed or oh, didn't yeah. realize that they were clerics. And not to mention the support we're getting in here, like we get a plague crafter cleric. Like <laughs> that's nuts. Um there's just God, there's so many good things. This this card I'm super excited about, and everyone who buys a box is gonna have access to it, which means Anyone who opens this card is most likely going to get rid of it, and everyone's going to have access to it. I love that kind of stuff. It's a good deck. It's going to be very fun to play, and it just it's going to be one of those commanders, I think, that's going to probably be a more popular Orzhov commander. And um, with us going and doing the, you know, the D&D set coming up, now that they're getting back into class race, I guarantee we're going to see even more clerics. Yep. Oh, I, uh, there's one I wanted to touch on really quickly here. It's the Verizal, the Split Current. Uh, this is, it's a Prosh-like ability, and I'm really happy to see them bringing stuff like that back. There is no point to play this in Standard. It's not good in Standard, but in Commander, <laughs> very good. Yeah. Uh, it's X and Simic for a 0-0 zero, zero mm-hmm. Serpent. It enters with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each mana spent to cast, so Commander Tax doesn't bug it. Whenever you cast a kick spell, you can remove two. The commander tax from it, mm-hmm. and uh, if you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. That's like a really, really cool Simic based commander to mm-hmm. constantly cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are two of these uh, multicolor legendaries that I'm actually really excited for. If I could quickly hit them, uh, yeah, so let's do it. The, yeah, <laughs> so the first one is uh, Chasm Royal Chaser, so it's just is it color, so it is it uh, blue, <laughs> blue and red. Uh, for a 1-2 legendary uh, human wizard with flying in haste, uh, tap the next instant or sorcery you cast this turn. Cost X less, less to cast for X's number of wizards you control as this ability resolves. I love it. It's a very cool wizard. Wizards tribes like, are yeah. already yeah. broken. Yeah, and I do like the specific wording with as this resolves. I think that's really mm-hmm. interesting. So This would be really, really good for Anala. But mm-hmm. also just as its own standalone wizard deck, so, this is a really cool commander. I like that you can oh, yeah. tap it immediately with the haste. It's you have eight down. wizards. Let's cast a mm-hmm. three mana enter the infinite and see what's up. Well, and I also oh, like, yeah. I, I like that because it has haste, you can tap it right away. But I also like that it has flying, so it gives it a little bit of evasion. Yeah. So if, mm-hmm. even if you do have it tapped, you don't have to worry about it so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I uh, I also am just a big fan of the art on this. That you know she's just like surfing on like a Nimbus three thousand. Yeah. It's, it's uh, awesome. Super freaking yeah. cool. <laughs> Quidditch, um, but for drug addicts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Quidditch on acid. Um, <laughs> but, and then the other one is obviously because I'm just a lover of Golgari. I don't know. I was going to put that a very different way. If you want to hear me to say what I really meant, I'll be on stream. Um, <laughs> uh, it's Grackma Skyclave Ravager. Um, so it's a legendary Hydra zero zero, a uh, Hydra horror. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so it enters the battlefield with three one ones on it. Whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a one one counter on it, put a one one counter on Grakma. And when mm-hmm. it, when Grakma dies, create an XX black and green Hydra creature token where X is the number of one one counters on Grakma, which is very cool. Especially like if you have the Ozilus, so then you keep the counters, move the counters, still get an extra counter. Mm-hmm. Very neat. Yep. I'm into it. I'm so. a little bit of a. a let, um, let me jump in with this. Hit it. I just built Tam. Tam, yep. whenever creatures enter, puts a vigilance counter on mm-hmm. it. Grackma enters with three counters on it, mm-hmm. meaning that it will always have four counters. Mm-hmm. With the Phyrexian mm-hmm. altar out, mm-hmm. if I pay three and remove two one one counters and his vigilance counter, he's mm-hmm. still a one one, mm-hmm. which will mm-hmm. sacrifice for two mana. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I can bring him back with Tam, mm-hmm. and I will make another one. So with Phyrexian altar, Grackma, Tam, I can go through my entire deck. And generate infinite mana, and have a ton of black, I was, black, black I was, hydras. I was trying to, oh, I was trying to make this a chill deck. I was trying to have a fun time, and then they're just like, <laughs> "Hey, do you want a combo piece for that?" I'm like, "Well, I guess." I mean, I guess. I, literally, Another this was spoiled piece. the day after I put it together. I like, I put it together, and they're like, "I'm gonna break that deck for you." <laughs> All right, yeah, you got like, me. Yeah, you got thanks, me on a technicality. <laughs> So we kind of we got past it really quickly, but I just wanted to go back to uh, Verizal. So something that's really cool about this card, um, so we have man. that, we have that, uh, what's right here, Skyclave Relic. We talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. So whenever you kick it, you know, you get two additional token copies of it. So if you were to play, you have Verizal and then you 
play it or play Skyclave Relic and then remove the counters, you're getting an additional copy, which will get what six mana of any yep. color <laughs> essentially. Mm-hmm. I, I thought I saw that interaction. I thought it was really cool, but Kicker mm-hmm. seems like a fun tribal to go down the rabbit hole of. Yes. And it they, seems weird. They really put a lot of it in, especially with that like maddening cacophony. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say <laughs> that to me. Oh, You're so stupid. Uh, but it's the it. they're just like, hey, you want traumatized to be better? We got you. Absolutely. Uh, um so, go so, ahead, yep. Yeah. Uh have we talked about Akiri, Akiri Fearless Voyager yet? Uh no. Okay, so that Akira is how she's sh- pronounced. Wow! Thank you for for noting that Akari? just correctly. It's it is most certainly not Akari. No, it I know. most it's certainly just, is not. It's just fun to raise hope. It has blood pressure. Most, normally, when like okay, names don't normally bother <laughs> me. So, sorry to interrupt and be rude, but like names because like essentially all of these names are not real. Like yeah. just because they're like um, language conventions means literally nothing because these names don't exist, so they can say that they're pronounced however they want to be them to be pronounced. Just Anya. because it was in the trailer, but it was in the trailer doesn't mean that wizards yeah. is pronouncing it's, it right. It's the same issue. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they, they created the character. The same, I'm pretty sure they get to decide it's how it's pronounced. The same issue that I had with Angie versus Anya, and I'm like, <laughs> don't call it that. It's get out Anya. of my house. <laughs> okay. It is not Anya. <sighs> Anyways, uh, now anyways, that I've yeah, gone down that, yes. that yes, tangent, please, it didn't matter. My continue yeah. with Akiri. Good. Akiri, Fearless Voyager. Uh, red, white, and one for a legendary creature core warrior. 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card, folks. Like This is card draw in Boros. Like, we are we are finally getting there. It's the end game. And then the kicker on, and the kicker on that Brennan, is... Brennan, uh, like, yeah. no. Brennan's reaction? <laughs> <laughs> so get it out of is, here. I hate yeah. it. <laughs> oh, God, it's great. So, uh, yeah, you pay a white. You can unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible into end of turn. Like, I'm a little bit less excited about that, but, like, holy buckets, people. Like, a, card draw in Boros the card for something that dope. Boros wants to do as yeah. well. Uh, well, this so, just makes SRAM another color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, like, like it still requires that you attack, um, like, which, which is, it's a very, very Boros thing. And the, the, the key thing on that phrasing is when you attack a player. So you're not going to go ahead and get multiple triggers for, well, at least I don't think you're going to get multiple triggers for attacking the same player with multiple equipped creatures. I think it you benefits you to go ahead and attack uh, three. Mm-hmm. So when it um, well when when I first saw this card uh, spoiled, uh, I immediately thought like obviously we want like a haste enabler, but what about living weapons? Yeah, mm-hmm. they come oh, yeah. with haste, they can attack and then they die or whatever. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Coming. Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. You your card yeah, and you, it, yeah, Brandon, yeah. you're a bad person. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I uh, you're a pretty cool guy. This cool you can place. say this is a really cool place. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I really do like uh, like the living weapons in this. Um, I mean, like equipment commanders are far and few in between, and I'm just I'm happy to see Akiri come back in a uh, like in a non partner way, yep. and yes. just be able to uh, to go ahead and like and really you know, and really get the ball rolling on something like on something aggressive because <laughs> at, at the very least, like you go ahead and you get your uh, you, know, you get your uh, artifacts back to your hand through somehow you know like white has uh white has all those blink abilities you can get your living weapons back to your hand throw them back down and then start to try to refill your hand like this is this is really solid design i'm loving where wizards is going for uh, for the future of red and white for and me i was like oh look at that like we're not just gonna beat face and leave you without any gas for the next 17 turns. well one other nice thing is like if you did have to take a, an equipment off of something to make it indestructible then you can plus one nahiri and put make a core warrior and put that equipment right back onto it, and then you still have an equipped creature, which is pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I'm ramming this into Sir Gwen. Remove it for yeah. one to make it indestructible and re-equip for zero anytime. Done and oh, done. Oh, yeah. Well, that there's is. also uh, Tiana Ship's Caretaker. That's one of Sherman's favorite decks, yeah. All right, you put it back in your hand. So, yeah. Really oh, balance yeah. those I'm... living weapons. Yeah. Yeah, we got this goal. Oh yeah, my god, maybe. everybody and their dog has a batter skull now. Box topper batter skull. Oh no. You actually, yeah. you actually I mean, get that if you buy basic lands now? 
this is the first Boros deck I'm actually excited to like build. I've never had any want or desire to build Boros, and You're this one I'm actually blasphemy. like. I love Boros. Oh God, well, Boros is the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's already getting better with that new white <laughs> right. land um, land card. Or, um, yeah, they're they're putting some silly stuff in. Yep. There's a few other ones. This Linvala, eh, it's not as good as old Linvala, but it's Linvala Shield of the Seagate. The art's great. Uh, it's one and uh, Azorius for a 3-3 Angel Wizard flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent opponent controls until your next turn. It can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Sack it, choose Hexproof or Indestructible. Creatures you control get in that ability till the end of the turn. Uh, here's the thing. It's still, it's still pretty good, especially when you consider that Limvala is a wizard as well. Yeah. So she's one piece of the puzzle already, which is nice. And also, if you're building around party, this will be very it's good. A very good one. It's just, to me, like I said, again, with my problem with Tazri, is that old yeah. Linvala, significantly stronger. Old Linvala had more applications, yeah. right? So, like, mm-hmm. that's that's the thing. Same with old Tazri, more applications. But, I, but, like I said, like, if you're building around this mechanic, this is going to be um, an automatic slot in. Because, like, in my opinion, if you're making a commander deck that's going to be party-based, you're going to put Tazri at the helm and you're going to slot Limbala in. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. That, yeah, that's, that's so, exactly it. Right? So, so I'm working... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm working on a Nyambi um, reanimator deck in Azorius, right? And she cares about legendary creatures. And I actually like this Limbala quite a bit because her second... The ability to sacrifice her... To choose either indestructible or hexproof is very strong, especially yeah. for three mana. Yep. You know, and it, it makes me. I don't always like in blue. I don't like playing counter spells all that often, depending on the deck. So mm-hmm. having the option to just protect my creatures without having to counter, counter. someone's like wrath or something is awesome. I also I, really, I also find that when you do something like that, if somebody's uh, trying to wreck the board, um, and you just protect yourself. They're like, oh, well, I mean, that's too bad. But if you counter someone, then they come for you. You know? <laughs> it's a oh, totally yeah. different vibe. <laughs> it's uh, true. Brennan, do you want to do this Zareth? Uh, sorry, which one? The Merfolk Rogue. The dead one? <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy that died in the trailer. The guy that literally didn't make it past the announcement. Zareth died in the trailer? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. You know, when Nahiri and Akiri and, and it's Zareth. And there, um, when she's got the weird orb thingy, he dies. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. that's real. So, uh, it is real. Look it up. <laughs> I dare you. Zareth Song. Sam? Song? Yes. Uh, the trick there is uh, three in a blue and a black for a 4-4 four, four with flash. Uh, you can pay two in Demir. Uh, return an unblocked attacking rogue you can control to its owner's hand. Put Zareth Sam... Uh, from your hand onto the battlefield, tap to attacking. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may put target permanent card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's Murph of Rogue Ninjutsu. Rogue Jitsu, I'm so excited. Rogue Jitsu. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is going right into the, uh, into the Animal on the Ruin Thief. Deck. Oh, yeah, yeah. duh. Good doing. I thought yeah. it was really cool, but I was also kind of upset that they're just like, what can rogues do? Uh, ninjutsu? Sure. Yeah, what do rogues do? Yeah, Nin- whatever. Ninja stuff? They, they both stealth, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I admit that when this guy was spoiled, I was a little bit underwhelmed because I thought to myself, like, okay, like, like this guy isn't really going to be a great commander because he doesn't have commander rogue jitsu. Yeah, so if he, if he so had like, it from yeah. command zone or tap, oh. that'd be super cool, but... I also didn't yeah. see the hype on it until they Commander put Commander Rogue Jutsu, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we mute Dante? <laughs> I mean, you totally can. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, it's 8.15 in the morning. I'll go right back to sleep. <laughs> mute him or not, he's still speaking the truth. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, back. It's, uh, but yeah, like, as soon as Anawa was spoiled, I was like, okay, like, this is where this guy is going. Like, he's never going to be the, the helm of your rogue deck, of your rogue deck, but he's absolutely yeah. going to be a cool the part of it. Tenant that you want. Well, you're also in the same colors as, like, Arcane Adaptation and, uh, Conspiracy to make all your creatures whatever creature type you want. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's also Changelings and, like, you're gonna, you're gonna get this ability off. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think it's the head of your or the helm of your deck. Oh, and no. you're gonna be no, stealing something from I've seen person. a lot of people talking about Morophon Shapeshifter Party. Ooh, mm-hmm. fun! Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
love it. Do we oh, have yeah, a that... bar box? <laughs> a bunch of... <laughs> Um, there's yeah. two. There's two others left. Um, one is mm-hmm. Zagras, Thief of Heartbeats. It's four in Rakdos for a four-four vampire rogue. Also cares about the party mechanic. One less for each creature in your party, so potentially two mana. Uh, flying, okay. flying Death Touch Haste. Other creatures mm-hmm. you control have Death Touch, which is just a nuts ability. That is Planeswalker Death mm-hmm. Touch. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. Planeswalker Death okay. Touch. I uh, don't like your super friends, so. I really like this. I don't think that it's going to be like super like objectively good, but I think it's a mm-hmm. good slot in. If, if for nothing else, the flying death touch chase other creatures have death touch. That's yep. pretty nasty. Well, I'm going to shove it in Kelsey right in the into my vampires. Yeah, yeah this will um. be in the deck that whenever I play against Lewis and he wants to play his his uh, wall stupid friend deck. Yeah, stupid, oh, stupid to fairy yep. to fairy to fairy to fairy to fairy. Anti Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That sounds terrible. Is it really? <laughs> I, uh, and, and then I did want to take this last one. It's Yasharn. Yasharn. <laughs> the four is big. The Yasharn is awesome. So it's two and Simic for an elemental boar 4-4. Four, four. That's when not it, Simic at all. Or not Simic? Mm-hmm. Simic. You oh, mad man. Simic Esnia. <laughs> Selesnia, green-white. Yeah. The other Simic. Uh, when it enters the <laughs> battlefield, search your library for a basic force card and a basic planes, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. So really, really good thing to bounce. Love it. But players can't pay life or sack non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. Mm-hmm. Smothering tides, okay. goodbye. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, my Must goodness. Suck, Brian. Oh, no. <laughs> if, I, uh, if I see this across the table from me when I'm playing Trin and Silvar, I'm just oh. going to scoop up my cards. No. I didn't even think about how bad it is against Trin and Silvar. So funny. When I, when I oh, saw God. the card spoiled and it was legendary, I was instantly like, Why? You have Nationals? That's crazy. I Nobody bunch, cares. I, know, yeah. I have a bunch of decks that I want to put it in. I wouldn't make it a commander, but like putting it in like Karametra. Ooh. Oh, get God. A, yeah. Get a Plains Forest. Get more Plains Forests. Mm-hmm. Just this one card shuts down so many of my decks. If it's just a creature, I can deal with it. But if it's a commander, it becomes so obnoxious. I would put yeah. this in the no, yeah. Well, it, it also shuts down a lot of competitive stuff that that focuses on going Second, off, yeah. sacking stuff, and also gaining life so they can Aether Flux. Yep. Like, that's crazy. Well, any of the pay additional oh my God, life I didn't even you think of Aether it. Flux. Yeah, yeah, no Aether Flux for you. Aether, oh, nothing. <laughs> Man, I've just... Oh, God. I've, I've got a guy in my playgroup who plays uh, a Layla Artful Provocateur, and he usually, like, combos off with yeah, with Divining Top and Bolas of Citadel, and then finishes everyone off with uh, with Aether Flux. Well, he's not not Bolas Citadel with this. Yeah. He's I not would love Citadel-ing. to be able to just go ahead and do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be really funny. Yeah, oh. just flash it in during his upkeep. Oh, God. This, that would be amazing. Yeah. Well, any uh, of the as, as additional cost pay X life? Nope. Mm-hmm. It does still let you crack Terramorphic Expanse. You're still good there. Yeah. What more could you possibly want? Yeah, they're not shutting down the fetches. Give us uh, the, okay, give us the fetches, what, take them away. I know it's on everybody's mind right now. Uh, there's 24 boars in Selesnian colors. It is on everyone's mind. Is there Boar tribal. Is there Boar 20? tribal is viable. There are 24, they're putting this trifle. Oh man, well, is that uh, is that including uh, shapeshifters? It is not. So there's even. Oh, more. Okay. Thank you for this beautiful news, Brennan. I don't know why you're oh. into like weird janky <laughs> tribal stuff, but I I love it. You're just like take the weirdest tribes, and, and Minotaur's finally got some good stuff, and now you have to find a new pet project. <laughs> yeah. Minotaurs, <laughs> boars, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> same vibe. Um, the last yeah. thing I did want to touch on here before we do our outro talks and stuff. Is all of these pathways? I oh. I just kind of want everyone's opinion on them. I'm not gonna name them all. All of them are they're each of the guild colors, and they flip. You choose what land you want. Untapped. They at mm-hmm. at least don't have the land types of like go get an island, go get a. Yeah. That would have been insane. That yeah. would have been oh yeah step under dual land good. Yeah, a, a, a very short step. Yeah, like that'd yeah. be too good. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, we'll go in order here. Zach, your pathway thoughts. I really like them. I like the fact that like we see a lot of commander players play like the scry lands, and I think these are already what you replace the scry lands with because nine times out of ten you're wanting the option to either go one color, you know, having both is great, but being able to just be like, well, I need, I know I need more black in my deck, or I know I need, I have more green pits in my deck, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this, and you know, being able to sacrifice the land 
to the graveyard, then pull it back in your hand. You can switch, you know, like in Wind Graves or in Get Rog Monster, that kind of stuff. These lands can be whatever you need them to be. I really like them. I think it's a really neat way that Wizards kind of got around the dual land thing. Yeah. Uh, Dante? Um, I I like them. My biggest criticism of them is that we don't have all ten. We've got all the enemy colors plus Selesnia. I would love uh, I would love all the the rest of the allied colors. Maybe uh, we'll get the oh, rest wait, of oh, them wait. in Legends. No, though I guarantee they're coming in the D and D set. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, I I absolutely love these things. Um, like just going off of what Zach said, the uh, like in addition to sacrificing them, recurring them. I mean, also like the uh, the Ravnica bounce lands, like. You know, most most budget players uh, will go ahead and will play at least one or two bounce lands in their decks, and this is fantastic. Like you know, you need green uh, this turn. You go ahead and you play it. You need white the next turn. You know, it's like it, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, I I really like the design space in here, and uh, yeah, it's going to save you from having to go ahead and you know like buy a plateau. Uh, <laughs> I could just go ahead and get my needle verge pathway, and ev- and everything will be fine. It's true. Oh, um, you wait your turn. I just have something yeah. to add that I know is is valid. Oh, go yeah, go ahead. Okay, it's not about about my feelings. Hope puts her hand up. I, I <laughs> me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, normally we don't have video. <laughs> um, no, I was gonna say um, I I'm wrong because I know I was reading an article. I I don't know if it was Rosewater or who it was, but they were talking about how um, the double face and the uh, modal things were kind of a test that they were doing, and they wanted to see how people would like them. And then, so they're just like, oh, well, we'll do, like, ones that really matter about lands in Zendikar, and then we're going to do other ones in Call Time, and, like, so, who, who knows? Oh, Call Time's going to have some? Yeah. I don't know what they're going to be. They're not going to be, like, lands, but they're, gonna but they're gonna have, like, that. like modal, double face cards. So, anyways. It's next person's turn, not mine. Brennan? <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like them, uh, so long as they, uh, they keep them like uh, they keep printing them. I, I think uh, like the commander decks recently, like people complain about the mana base, and like we get those weird like signet lands for no reason. That I have hate them. Still in garbage. So if they can if they can keep like printing these and keeping the cost down, uh, I I think they're fantastic. If if this is the only printing ever, they're just gonna skyrocket for no reason, That's and no true. one will ever be able to play them. Yeah. That's um, very valid. Ryan is the next in line host. I don't know what these are. The, what? Do you actually not? <laughs> no. Oh, they're, they they're, made... Okay, they're, they're double face cards. Um, They're one color of land on one side and one color on the other side. Come so in untapped. Do you draw it? They come in untapped. You can play it as either. So if you're like mana screwed and you really need red, you play the red side. Oh, yeah, the, the, those if, are great. So like, for instance, there's River Glide Pathway is the blue side. So you can choose to play it for blue, or you can flip it and play Lava Glide Pathway for red. And that's why Dante was saying, like, if you were to bounce it back to your hand and you really needed, like, the blue side, but you had played it as the green side, then now you can put it back oh, down yeah, as, yeah. Well, as the blue side. They these come, these they will definitely untapped, help yeah. with, with mana base. Totally. Well, they're yeah. just they're really mana good mana cards. Fix, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hope, go ahead. Your turn, please. I also quite like them. I think they're very <laughs> neat. I agree with Brennan that as long as they keep being printed and stay at a reasonable cost, I think they'll be great. Um, I hope that they stay... A li- that they stay um, are they rare? Yeah. I hope that they, they stay... They are rare. I hope that they stay at a lower cost than, say, the Triumphs, because the Triumphs are like six to thirteen dollars and like that's pretty ridiculous in Mm most box yes um but you know they're pretty expensive but if they're like three bucks i think that'd be pretty valid oh zach you're picking up what i'm putting down it seems you may go high five the one thing i think it's gonna help these cards stay down in price is the fact that when you look at the triumphs they do have the land types whereas Mm -hmm. these cards do not so i think Looking at the budget aspect of it, what we're all kind of concerned about, except for Dan, is that... Or Brian. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep this in mind really quickly to jump in on that. They don't have yeah. the land types yet. But yes. uh, yeah. there's nothing stopping them printing them. They would not functionally be, functionally be as good as the dual lands to print with the land types. Sure. They're not in yet. Yeah. Right. But that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, right now, I think that'll help keep the price down on these versus the triumphs is yep. that I think they'll definitely oh, no. be more than a dollar rare, but I think that they'll be like between two and four. Maybe the the blue ones will be like four back. I think they'll be a little higher than that. But I was gonna say yeah. that I think triumphs that, are six. Huh? These are better than the triumphs though. The triumphs are tapped, whereas these are not but tapped. But they're fetchable. 
the triumphs yeah. are fetchable, but for the triumphs are fetchable. The, fe- the, fi- the triumphs all also cycle as well. Yeah. Uh, so if you do, if you draw them in the late game, like if you draw this in the late game, it's still just kind of like a dead draw. You draw a triumph in the late game, you cycle it away for three. Hopefully, you get something better. Yeah. I, right. I'm looking at it value wise from like competitive play, and in competitive sure. play, you you need the fast mana available. So if I'm if I'm trying to mystical tutor or uh, demonic consultation, I need that untapped black or blue mana instantly, right? I don't. So mm-hmm. fetchable yeah, isn't I... the problem. You're not really trying to fetch them that way unless you're cracking the the mm-hmm. shocks. Yeah, I don't know. Or the the fetch lands. Yes. So yeah, mm-hmm. like these. We'll see. I, I think they'll be a little higher, but my like my thoughts on them were they're not going to be feel bad cracks. Like all of these, every one of the rare lands, even the crawling barons, mm-hmm. is uh, is a pretty good one. Crawling barons is the worst one of the rare lands you can crack, but for all of these lands, they they don't feel bad. Pretty much everyone's going to have use for them, or they're going to be in cases that, like the case cards, people will buy them through. I don't think these will be in the binders. These are better than the scry lands. Significantly yes. better yes. than the temples. Those should have yeah, been absolutely. uncommon. They should not have been a rare. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, exactly. Those those were feel bad for a lot of people when they yep. cracked them. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I don't want oh, another yeah. temple. I bought my box and I got those eight of them. Those are good for draft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah they're great they're great for draft, but right. they're not great for for anything else. Yeah, like if I know this isn't a finance podcast, but if you're going to invest in anything uh, in Zendikar Rising, like these pathways are probably what you should get your play sets of. Well, and and Brennan yeah. did make a really good point of if they're not reprinted, the value mm-hmm. on these is going to go up. Like they they might be like Hope said at a very lowest, they might be four mm-hmm. or five dollars. But if they're not reprinted in a timely fashion, commander players are going to devour these cards up. They're not going to sit in stores. I'm probably oh, yeah, exactly gonna, depending on price point. I'll probably buy every single one at my LGS that is available. And and didn't they say that there there's gonna be more product for Zendikar Rising as well compared to the other ones that have come out? I as of late? don't know. Oh, I heard someone mention that there's gonna be a lot more of the like the boxes and everything coming out for people to get. Certainly not gonna have them in stock. <laughs> that's for dang sure. <laughs> I, I was just scrolling down. I think this is so funny. The they, one of the tokens in the set is copy, and it's just this token can be used to represent a token that's a copy of a permanent. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they're really going. Yeah, but no, I, I don't I don't know about that. I also don't know if that's just relative to having draft boosters as well as set boosters. Yeah, maybe yeah. that may be part of it. I'm not sure. Um, well, they I made do more product, maybe a different product. But uh, one other nice thing about this though is that it's at the very beginning. Like, we have a very long time to, like, sit on all of this. Like, it's, like, we've got, I think we're going to get quite a lot of Zendikar. I think it's going to be really popular. I think people are going to buy a lot of it while it's in print, mm-hmm. just because it's cool. Yeah. And there's also yeah. a little bit of, like, um nostalgia and, like, you know, people just like yeah, Zendikar. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, I, I, I yeah, generally wanted to talk about wow, the wow. rest of the, oh, go ahead, Zach. That's something I wanted to ask you guys about. Was that what do you, what do you see yourself picking up? Is it going to be a draft booster, or the draft booster box, or the set booster box? Because the draft boosters, I'm fairly positive you're guaranteed one of the pathways. Uh, I I think you're. I thought they said you're guaranteed a modal card. I, I thought it was you were in the draft. Either way, the answer is yes. If you can be guaranteed a path booster, <laughs> then you'd be you'd be there. It's not. I'm it's, buying one of each because yeah. I'm a. Bad. I'm a crackhead. I might buy a collector booster. The fact that they come with two of the expeditions alone is uh, pretty worth it. Because I, oh, wait, I can't see wait, them going seriously? down. Wait, it, seriously? It's guaranteed to come with uh, two expeditions? Guaranteed oh, two box toppers, you. baby. It comes with oh, two wow. box toppers that are non-foil, but the collector packs, you can also crack, crack. expeditions mm-hmm. in them in foil. So, oh, goodness gracious. And they think that the crack rate in the collector packs is going to be uh, expedition in about one in six packs. So in a collector booster, you may come out with four of the expeditions. Oh God, I did not need to know that. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Our bad. Did they jack the price of them? Uh, no, as far as I can tell, they're going to be the same price as a normal collector. Yeah, thirty-five, forty bucks. I don't oh, know what that Jesus. is in American. My. Yep. Uh, yeah, fool and his money are soon parted, and uh, I am most certainly a fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, well put, my dear. <laughs> I will be getting my set booster, and that'll be that. That's that's the wise choice. It's yeah. not mine. I'm getting a draft booster. I think Daniel might get a set booster, and then I he may or may not get a collector booster, which he's never done. 
Yeah, I generally don't like the collector Daniel boosters. I a, just buy the ones I want. Yeah. But there's so many. Yeah. I don't know. Really quickly, I gotta I gotta talk about that plant one. I just want to make the plant like Avenger of Zendikar Commander. It seems fun. Everyone mm-hmm. keeps complaining about it. It's like the final off world, yeah, world sculpture. Yeah. It counts how, it cares on how many basic lands you have. I just don't know. Oh, I love that nice. one. And I as soon as I saw a showcase version, I was like, well, I'm gonna get that. Dang. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, yes. Uh today we were joined by writers. It was awesome. We create a lot of content and we do it because lots of people Partners, Brennan. <laughs> Objective partners. <laughs> you, you Britain, you count. <laughs> and also we just love you. So But I did want to say thanks to everyone who has helped like generate content or just been around. Like every, everyone here is good people. Mm-hmm. Uh Brennan's stream is like a great thing. Make sure you guys are checking it out. Yeah. Check out the articles when they are coming out, the same as Dante. Yeah. You heard Dante speak. He yeah. can also write. To uh, <laughs> to everyone who has... Just, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> to, to everyone who's been here for the year, thank you and stuff. It's been a very fun experience growing, yeah. talking about magic, and it's fun to sit down with my friends and just talk about a game. But that we love, that yeah. we would be talking about anyways, and it's cool that everybody wants to be a part of yeah. it. And, like, I can't believe we were at a year already. It just yeah. feels kind of unreal. I was going to say, we, I think we skipped the excitement. This is one One year! year. Yeah. Like, yeah, how I know, do we right? do so that? Happy anniversary! Oh my god! No! Yay! <laughs> oh man, incredible! We should get cake. <laughs> but no, it's so exciting, you know. Like it's it's just like it's a really big deal, and you know, especially when you consider that no, yeah. most 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 podcasts fail after what four? It's six episodes. Six episodes. Six, six episodes. episodes. Yeah, six episodes. Yeah. And here we are, 52, um, 52 plus. 50, 53, hope. 53, episode 53, you said it. 53. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> isn't that, like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's a good thing I was, it was a good thing I was here to keep us together. Yeah, okay, you really, you really pulled your weight you there, Zach. You held the fort down, yeah. You know, and obviously we've gone through some changes, like we added me and we added Brian and Sherman kind of had, had to go do his own thing. Yeah, he's like, working. Yeah. But, you know, um, but we've also new like new grown, partners, new writers. Yeah, we've grown such a huge team, and it's just really cool to see how big this has gotten. This little pet project that we started in our basement. Well, and we have a lot of exciting <laughs> news coming out for our next year. We're mm-hmm. we're sharing that after. Mm-hmm. But uh, I I just wanted to say again, thank you so much for everyone who's been around and been a part of it and, and supported us yeah. and listened and read and yeah, see, joined the community like it's seen just, our spam you know, yeah came on streams oh yeah, yeah. it is yes. very nice I did that once. you definitely got to do yeah. it again i still have to find time to get on that one stream but you guys stream right before i go to work yeah my my work wanna, schedule is opening up a little bit brennan there we go we'll get hoping so. tracks it oh. i want to <laughs> To everyone who comes to our live streams and compliments me on my tokens, uh, that means more to me than you guys would ever know. <laughs> I do enjoy Zach's drawing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be streaming tonight for anyone who gets the early episode. Um, if not, thank you again so much. Hope I'm rolling the outro. Go. All right, so we do stream every Saturday at. 6 p.m. Mount Standard Time. Check out our website into the 99.com for all of those articles as well our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook are all into the 99. Check out all our socials as well as our YouTube. If you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, you can also do that. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Take it easy. Peace. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love this song. Yeah, it's a, I it's love a this banger. dance party over here. <laughs> yeah. That's how do